Max, BGC2, myself, our exchange, we're long crypto, we're long foreign exchange, we're long capital markets. We need diversification. It's a bit like I'm looking at some bankers out there. It's wonderful nowadays, isn't it, when the bank rather than give you cash for your bonus, they give you stock. You sell it as soon as you can because your career is already exposed to that risk. Do you need more in your pension fund? Do you need more in your portfolio? I try and steer away from what I'm naturally long. I mean, if I am my biggest asset, then I'm 100% capital markets, so I need to somehow get out of it. Actually, I wouldn't have mind um, because my, my golden pension, you know, it's investing in emerging market equities and things, and certainly over the last couple of months, it doesn't been a very smart thing to do. But I, I believe that in as much as I don't know what the price may look like tomorrow, perhaps other do, right? And so if, if a pension fund, you know, that's what they're doing for a living, they think they should have a small allocation of crypto, you know, so be it. I'm not, in, when I think of my pension, as opposed to what we did today, I don't think of, oh, is the price ticking up or down, you know? I guess it's for the long term, and maybe others are better placed than I am. You'll all have it in, look, I don't know, I can't tell you time horizons. You'll all have it in your pension funds within 10 years. I think you'll probably have it within your pension funds within three years. Um, you probably should have it in your pension fund now. Um, they're looking at it. It's all about the security um, of the asset um, and how you can have diversified exposure to it. Right, so it's a bit like you don't want to choose one fund manager today. Um, I don't want to choose one fund manager. Really. <coughs> but you're not very far away at all. We launched Almex Digital for the institutional market. I didn't launch it to compete with the retail platforms that are out there. The guys that open 100,000 accounts a day, my hat's off to them and, and what they do. But we launched it for institutional money so that you know, Max can exchange risk with like-minded participants so that we can provide a service for real money when it comes. It will come, it is coming, but they have a few hurdles, mostly internal hurdles and approvals to get over before you see that influx. We launched in May. It's the fastest growing exchange we've ever launched. So we, we made a profit in month five. That's never happened to us ever before. The, the, the biggest exchange we have in LD4, it took three years to get to break even. And Max Digital, five months. So, who are the players today? I built it for banks and their customers and the largest non-bank prop trading firms in the world. The truth is it's the latter, who are mostly the traders today, and some more boutique funds. But the DNA of those boutique funds starts of what you'd call institutional money today. They just call something different. And Max would know his biggest competitors in the making space, they look a bit like the guys who are the biggest on the exchanges in Chicago, right? They look like the biggest players in foreign exchange. They're just based in the Bahamas or the Seychelles uh, or some other less regulated jurisdiction. There's a sense for that, you know, um, the more complex the market, uh, the more you can find the niche for yourself. Certainly you see that in the United States, you know, with regularness and all those quirky features of the market structure over there, you know, it's labels and players that really understand all the types and things like that to, to really thrive. Um, so it's a bit of a difficult question to say, right, because at the same time, if it becomes more standardized, perhaps the, the pie is bigger. But on the other hand, it's of course, yeah, at the moment it works for me, I don't need to work for me in five years' time. So the, the short answer, that Max just gave you is yes, but he knows he can't. And look, there was Max knows this better than I do. There was free money in the crypto space, right, in 2016, 2017. There was what people call arbitrage. It wasn't arbitrage, it was a massive credit trade. And so the credit trade, the credit spread was now narrowed to, to a level where the risk reward isn't there. So why does a market maker need better infrastructure, more exchanges like Elmex Digital? It's because we need the size of the market to expand to cover for that.
compression spreads. Um, but you asked a question about you know, what one thing does the market need? I'll tell you what it needs, and if there's anyone out there, uh, it needs proper banking. <coughs> That's it. With proper banking comes credit, comes clearing, comes settlement, comes trust. Satoshi's white paper. Trustless, decentralized. Well, well done, everyone. <laughs> we have absolutely zero trust, so we spend our lives chasing coin and dollars around the world from one <coughs> triple C rated bank to another triple D rated bank. We need someone to come in and bank the institutions that are already in play. There's a great stable currency out there allegedly called Tether. Just so you know, it's with a bank where the value of Tether is 50 times the balance sheet of the bank. That makes no sense. That just makes no sense. So the banks that we park $300 million with every day in fiat, they need to move into the crypto space. Just because I touch a Bitcoin doesn't make me illicit. With that, all of a sudden, you can see this whole market explode. And I really mean explode. Because all the other bank players will come in, they will join, the pension funds will be happy to send money to that bank. Right? You will have escrow accounts. And all of a sudden you'll have credit in the marketplace. And all of the plumbing will work better. At the moment we spend half our lives, honestly, chasing 100 Bitcoin around the planet. It's, it's nonsensical. I think it's going to be one of the established banks, if I'm honest with you. Uh, it simply can't be the newcomer unless they suddenly raise $10 million. Mm -hmm. And that may not be enough. Right, what's the market cap of crypto today? 100 billion? Yeah, roughly. So it could be anywhere, depending on what the price is, it could be 100 billion to, to, to 200 billion. So a bank that we know, we like, and we use is just going for IPO. They're raising 50 bucks. That's irrelevant. Right? It's just irrelevant. I mean, the guys on LMAX Digital settle more than that every day, day in, day out. They move multiples of that around, day in, day out. It has to be someone on the balance sheet. They will come. I, you know, I'm not telling tales of a school, but you can read any of the, any of the newspapers, even one that you might, you might know very well, even. Um, and they'll say that these mainframe banks are coming, they are looking at it, they're worried about the origin of the funds. They're worried about the historical lack of KYC. Once they get used to participants like Elmex Digital, like BTC2, like the other major players that trade on Elmex Digital today, and they understand they don't have to bank 100,000 new customers every day from San Francisco, then they'll come and they'll win. The first mover in banking will win. In, in the context of crypto specifically, uh, you can't trade everything on an exchange. It doesn't make sense because when you think of when you think of bonds, when you think of equities, it's easy. It's always the stock, the bond against the dollar against the euro. But in crypto, it's every, it's all to all. It's everything against everything. You want to trade Bitcoin yen. You want to trade Ethereum Bitcoin. You want to trade Litecoin against Ripple. You know, and so in, in a context where someone wants to trade in cross possible. It doesn't make sense that you get all of your liquidity from the exchanges because probably the liquidity on the exchange would coalesce around some, you know, some major pairs, but then you're going to be able to, to offer anything to your plan. So for that, I think an OTC market is going to make a lot more sense. Great. We finally have a point we can disagree. <laughs> okay, well, David, do you think it's going to be OTC? No, but, so you can agree and disagree with that. The FX market is an OTC market, but you have lots of central limit order books out there. LMAX Exchange runs central limit order books. It's what we believe in. Um, but they're anonymous, right? They're not disclosed bilateral rooms. Um, I think that the current bilateral, in inverted commas, OTC market in crypto is nonsense and won't exist, right? It just won't exist. It's very inefficient, it's very expensive, and one in a hundred trades comes off. Right? Don't believe the press. Oh, a guy calls me up, he's got a gazillion Bitcoin to sell. No, he doesn't. 
and he has 1,000 and he's phoned 1,000 people and maybe the price is right for that. So that mark is dead. Um, to Max's point, liquid products trade best on exchange, it's proven, right? The only institutions in capital markets that are more profitable 10 years after the last crisis are exchanges, right? There's a reason for that. Liquid products trade well on exchange. Well, Hence, regulators FX. give a little bit of a push as well, I guess. But, but if you look at FX, you know, it trades well on exchange, but um, on the run treasury, it's trade well on exchange. Corporate bonds don't, right? So the last Hoogema flip coin um, that's listed on XYZ exchange, yeah, probably there's no liquidity there. But what, what Max just mentioned, you know, Ripple Litecoin, that will trade best on exchange. Um, Bitcoin Yen, that will trade best on exchange. Bitcoin Dollar, that will trade best on exchange. So whatever that list is, currently we list only the top five, um, but bear in mind we also have 80 currency pairs. So do the math. Outside of that, yeah, perhaps it'll be an OTC market. So yeah, that's the answer. Um, in size, it ends up being dealer to dealer. They may or may not do an exchange. I mean, I have, you know, we list everything on the central level order book, but we have larger size customers. You might know them as OTC desks. They actually ask not to see the top five levels. Because it's five levels of a coin, which is kind of pointless to them. They're looking to exchange risk in a few hundred thousand dollars. Uh, his cohorts in, in Chicago, um, are playing the same game. That's a war of which they enjoy. But you know, the, the, the easy the easy alpha comes from uh, the client flow. Well, what I really like to see um, appear is a mid, mid matching facilities for dealers. You would like to? That would be quite interesting. Yes. I think we have a choice price anyway, sir. <laughs> but actually, no. Joking aside, that that's eminently possible. And guess with the club, you can do that. I mean, <coughs> we're six months in, so. Uh, I think only last week we started to see a decent player just putting massive uh, his passive interest into the book. That's how the big FX club started. When that happened, you start to end up with a real exchange, where people start to put their passive interest in, and there's more of that coming.